So for those of you who maybe are new, I'm going to assume most of you are from session one, but just in case, uh, I'm Mike Rothman, background, Silicon Valley, some three-letter associations on the East Coast, and uh, you know, I, I'm an author, but I'm wearing my scientist slash data analyst hat today. I have no classes to sell, caveat emptor, this is data that I've experienced that I believe would be helpful. It is what I do, and um, and yeah, you know, session one was really about giving, um, yeah, you know, talking about the algorithm and giving you some idea of what's going on in the background, and this is really about what to do with a lot of that information. So, um, I, I stopped when yeah you know, we had like five minutes left to that. So uh, I, I I did not guess the break point correctly. I think the slide after this was the official break point, but. So I will continue where I left off. Um, so clicks, the act of bidding and scaling the bid. So I don't remember what the, this is. Oh, right. So, so here, here, here's, a, here's a fact of life. Um, you know, when, when you're bidding for attention, um, you know, and this, oddly enough, really matters when it comes to scaling on like places like Facebook and stuff like that. Um, you know, not so much, uh, not as much as Amazon, but the, the theory still holds true. Um, when, when you're bidding a certain amount, you'll, you'll get what, you know, you, you'll, if, if you look at your campaigns, you'll see you're, you're like, I, I want to bid, you know, say no more than 10 cents, uh, whatever the ma magic number is. Um, and, uh, or let's say, yeah, I'm willing to bid a dollar, but the clicks that you're getting are maybe 13 cents or something really cheap. So it doesn't necessarily, you know, you're, it's not forcing you to get the expensive clicks. It's trying to, the algorithm ultimately is trying to get you the cheapest clicks they can find for that match with what you're advertising for. Um, so, you know, when you're, you know, have a certain budget, it's going to find you the cheapest ones. You're going, oh, that's great. You know, well, I want to scale that. You know, let's, let me, let me, um, you know, let me increase my budget. You know, let's say you've maxed out, yeah, you had a budget of, you know, $5 for that day. And you're like, well, let me, let me go to 20 because this is great. You know, and suddenly, or 10 in this case, 2x. Um, yeah, and you go, wait a minute, my clicks are more expensive. Because ultimately, what you'll tend to see is that the cheap clicks, you, you ran out of those people, and now to gather more, um, you know, the algorithm found some relative, uh, relevant matches, but they were more expensive. And then obviously, if you scale it even further, um, you know, get more and more expensive. So, I mean, this is just kind of a rule of thumb. It applies to almost all of these auction-like campaign mechanisms. Um, so, and this came up in a question, I think it was after we closed the last session. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of concern with regards to scaling. And, uh, and I know I have this slide come up again in, in a couple slides. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on the bullets that I had because uh, I have a different point on the second one. And I'll otherwise talk ahead of myself. So um, you, you, you do want to be very conscious of what you're targeting when you're creating a category campaign. Um, you know, and, and I will point out some of the information that um, exists here. And, I'm, and I, I guarantee I'll, I'll talk ahead of, my, uh, ahead of this slide uh, because I can't help myself. Uh, I will point out, and for those of you, you might not be able to see it, but you know, when you're creating the campaign, some of this information does not show up again. Specifically, um, you know, only when you're creating the campaign does it tell you that, you know, I'll use 
one of the examples, you, you probably can't read it from where you're sitting. Um, you know, what, one of them says, oh, this is, you know, fantasy action adventure. And it happens to be associated with books, meaning paperback, um, under the literature and fiction adventure stories in action. Um, okay, that's interesting data, but the key relevant point there was it's a book category. So if, if you're actually targeting that as your ebook, you know, y y your ebook can't be in that category. So the data associated with your ebook won't, you know, your ebook won't show up under that category. Now, if you offer a paperback, which I highly recommend, um, it will. Now, the other thing that doesn't show up anytime other than when you're creating the campaign is how many products are associated with that category. Notice, you know, we're seeing, I mean, I'll just read off some of the numbers. You know, okay, for fantasy action adventure, uh, you know, you have between 16,000 and 27,000 um, products. Meaning, when you create a campaign for this category, your book may show up in any of those thousands of targets, which is, a, which is an important piece of information. Um, and I want you to scroll that away because we'll talk about that more later. Because if you look at an existing category campaign, you won't see that information. You know, when you create it, it's gone. So, you know, so up front when you're creating them, make note of this because it's very relevant to the picking of the categories and with regards to being able to scale. Um, this is where I said, oh, I think I'm gonna, this is a transition, yeah, it's not, okay, yeah. Session two. Um, so, uh, again, what is, what is this marketing stuff really about? You know, we're trying to create brand awareness. You know, I'm a new writer, no one knows who I am, so how do I get in touch with people who don't know me? Um, that's really key, so. Um, you know, getting impressions is key, you know, and, and, and again, just, you know, in case anyone's not familiar, uh, you know, an impression is having your book show up somewhere that someone saw it on the product screen. Um, doesn't mean they clicked on it, but they saw it. And if we we're going to use any psychological basics, the more you see something, the more you'll be tempted to do you know, click. So impressions are important. Um, and again, for, or for Amazon, we don't pay for impressions. We pay for clicks. Um, so ideally, you'd, you'd want lots of impressions, cheap clicks. Um, but ACOS is key. And, and, and here's something, you know, and I preface this again, I have nothing to sell. And, um, and uh, yeah, I don't have marketing courses or otherwise, but w one thing that I see emphasized a lot, which I think is misleading, is click-through. So click-through, for those who don't know, is, hey, yeah, it, it's kind of a, a, a ratio between, you know, how many impressions you're getting, and, you know, how, how many impressions does it take for you to get a click? You know, and, and people, you know, people focus on that. I'd argue it doesn't make much sense um, to do that. So, you know, and, and, and I'm pulling some of these arguments from uh, other places on the internet, you know. Uh, so if, if, if anybody is the source of this, I, I, I apologize. This is not to say you're wrong. This is just to say it's incomplete. Um, yeah, there are a lot of people who argue a click-through percentage of 0.4% is what you should be, you know, the average should be. You know, they'll argue you need to be 0.3%, otherwise, you know, you're not going to be, you know, it's not a successful campaign. Uh, I, I, I'd, I'd have choice words for that phrase, but, you know, um, uh, it's misleading. So, why? And uh, I've got my, you know, my, my lovely cartoon to illustrate the point. So, yeah, uh, you know, get, getting, a, um, getting a click basically means you're aiming in the right direction. You, you've targeted someone who maybe has some interest. That's good, you know, and, and you know, and, and that's okay. Um, but ultimately, the sale is the only thing that matters. So, you know, if, you're, if your sales aren't converting, 
but you're getting lots of clicks, who cares? You're just wasting money. Um, you know, you're aiming in the right direction, but for whatever reason, you're not converting the sales. That's a problem. So, yeah, so when people talk about click-through, I, I really don't pay attention to click-through. A lot of people tell you to pay attention to it. I think that's just wrong. Um, it's ACOS. It's the average cost of your sale. That's the key thing to focus on. You know, click-through is interesting data. It, it kind of get, gets you some information, but I, as a data, data scientist, I'm not sure what the relevance of that data is. I haven't come up with a correlation really because it doesn't matter if you're not getting a conversion. Um, now, one of the big problems is in, on Facebook, yeah, when, you're, when you're generating clicks on a third party, not on Amazon, how do you know you're converting? You know, how do you know you're getting a sale? On, on Amazon, you can know. You know that I got a click, you know, I got 12 clicks, 100 clicks, whatever, and I see a sale. You know, so Amazon tells me if the, if the clicks originated on the Amazon storefront. But if you're doing a Facebook ad or any other ad, Google ad, etc., how do you know? And, and, and this, too, seems to be missing from a lot of courses. Um, it's relatively new, so I, I understand, but it was available last year, and it's available still. Um, you know, there's something called Amazon Attribution. Um, yeah, it's still officially in beta. It's accessible to everyone, you know, and, and it works. Um, I'd advocate for you to check it out. Because my rule of thumb is, is that if you can't measure it, you know, so from a management perspective, I can't, manage, uh, I can't measure it, I can't manage it. So that's the same with campaigns. If I, if I am looking at the data I'm getting and I don't know whether I got a sale, well, well, you know, uh, what am I doing? Um, so I have that attitude with Facebook ads. If you do Facebook ads, you should be doing Amazon attribution. Um, you know, because at least Amazon, you know, and, and all Amazon attribution really is, is it allows you to create a link. Let's say you're going to advertise, you know, your fluffy bunny novel and you have, you know, you know, you have it on Amazon and you go, hey, Amazon, I need an attribution link, which basically means it cr it'll create a link that you give to f the Facebook ad manager and say, when someone sees my ad and wants to click on it you know, on Facebook, use this link. And Amazon will receive the link and, and, and do, it'll treat it as if it had received it on the Amazon storefront and it'll let you know, did you get a sale? What happened? Did the person instead do Kindle Unlimited and start reading it? You know, it gives you some key data that you need to know on measuring efficiency. Yeah, now, my data, yeah, and my caveat, my data may not be indicative of other people's data. Um, and, and I strongly assert that because I would like my data to be wrong. But I see a lot of inefficiency. The farther away you are from the storefront, the more inefficient it is. And I've actually measured this several ways. Yeah, the attribution thing, absolutely. Uh, you know, the example I, I have here is I had um, 1,700 clicks produced. Let's just imagine 1,700 clicks at, let's say, 10 cents a click cost me $170 for those clicks on, let's say, a Facebook ad. Yeah, so this is from the attribution data. Um, it claims I got 16 sales. So out of that information, and, and I got some reads, so $13 worth of reads. So, or sorry, units sold, oh, 18, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, interesting. So. I guess somebody bought multiple. Um, so I make roughly $5 each, so that, that's $90 plus $13 in reads. So it's 100 and, let's just say 100 and change. I'm not making money on that ad. I, I'm getting sales, but I'm not making money. It's inefficient. Um, I mean, that's like a you know, 1 to 100 you know, conversion rate. It's not good. Um, and I've tested this on my website as well. So uh, back when I was wide distribution, where I sold on Barnes & Noble, Book, uh, Kobo, iTunes, everywhere else, I would create a Facebook ad and point people, this is before attribution existed, um, I would point people to a website 
and I'd have a pick list of them. So uh, it was very simple. You click on the ad on Facebook and, um, and you landed on a list saying, do you want to look at this on Amazon, Barnes & Noble? I mean, I gave them just choices of clicks, you know, like the, the stores that it was available at. So what I saw, let's say for like 100 clicks on Facebook, I saw on my website, I received 100 clicks, great. You know, math worked out, math checked out. But only 33% or so actually chose to click at all. They never, they never even went further. So the further you are away from the point of sale, the less efficient you are. It's, a, it's actually, a, it's a logical rule of thumb anyway. So, um, so I want Facebook, you know, ads to be usually successful. Um, and I'm sure they are, but I'm just not seeing it. Um, and I argue whatever mechanism anyone uses, you should be trying to measure it because otherwise, how do you really know? Yeah. And, uh, and I, now I will point out one thing and I, I've not seen anyone else recommend this. So uh, Amazon attribution works in, in the following way. You basically are saying, all right, fluffy bunny book. You know, that's, that's the book I'm going to be advertising on Facebook. But let's say you have other books for sale. You got the whole zoo involved. Um, so you list them all as, you know, if someone clicks on this and they choose to buy one of my other books, I count that as interesting information. You know, it's like, you know, if they may not have bought the book I was advertising, but if they bought one of my other books, score. I, I like that. I want to know. So I basically added all the, all the books I have available in this case. So again, I had 18 sales. Only three of them were to the book I advertised. All the other sales were for some of my other books. So, which makes the, the, the data even worse because I really only got three sales out of the you know, all those clicks for the thing I was actually advertising. So again, this is just data for you guys to absorb and ask questions of the experts, you know, because I'm not a Facebook expert. Um, so I, and I'll talk briefly on, on some of this stuff. Uh, you know, I talk about uh, automatic targeting and I just show examples. I choose, you know, when I create campaigns, I know a lot of people, to control the amount that they spend, they do down only, you know, for the dynamic bids. Um, and, and I completely understand, you know, let's say I do not want to spend more than this amount um, for a bid. Okay, that's, that's reasonable. Uh, morally equivalent is the up-down. And actually, that's what I use. Um, now, let's say I don't want to spend more than a dollar. I, t I don't ever bid a dollar, but you know, let's say I don't want to spend more than a dollar. So if you do up down, it's 50 cents. Um, and that's interesting in as much as it gives you a large window up down for it to actually go ahead and navigate. Um, I've seen a difference in performance and I've done things. You can't do things side by side and people, I'll actually show why. But um, I've done different periods of time where I've done down only versus up down and my up downs have performed better. And Amazon actually recommends using up down. Um, they should be morally equivalent, but the data seems to indicate up down is preferred. I don't have a why, I just see what the data is. Um, yeah, like I said, I personally use this. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, could call it the OCD in me. I, I, the, the top of search and product page adjustments, I really don't play with them, but why, why do I have 2% there? Don't even, I, I don't know. I, I just do it. Um, uh, there's no real reason. So, um, paperback. So, um, yeah. So I do automatic targeting for paperback oftentimes. Um, and, and, and I'm going to have a point with this. It, it's, you know, this gives you an idea of just s some of the information. Um, you know, uh, uh, I forget which store this is off of. Um, it's, it's probably Germany. Um, 
but yeah, we're seeing an average aid cost of 48% um, you know, across 25 days. And you know, it cost me 85 euro for 72,000 impressions. And this, this is going back to the mantra, the more time someone sees an ad, the more likely they're eventually to bid on it. Um, you know, even though they may not have clicked it the first 20 times they saw it, but if they saw it the 21st time, they might go, yeah, you know what? I, I recognize that from somewhere. Let me go look at it. So I'm a big believer in getting impressions if they're cheap. Um, uh, yeah, so and it just shows you some of the ACOS breakdowns. But, um, yeah, ebook, yeah, my ACOS tends to be a little higher. Um, yeah, this is, a, yeah, again, just a sample, but... Yeah, it cost me roughly 22 euro for 30K impressions. Um, automatic targeting. Uh, and category targeting, I see this. And this is where I kind of summarize something that's important. Um, yeah, so, yeah, and category was 85%. So, and, and, and note, it was 85%, and um, that's my wide part of the funnel. Um, it's not bad. Uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, now, notice also the cost for the impressions is, is relatively cheaper um, you know, for, for categories. Now, uh, and, and also, a lot of people don't realize, and you know, it, takes, it takes a campaign up to two weeks to really ramp up when you, from creation to evaluation. I don't actually start measuring information until two weeks after I've created it, largely because it's, it, it, you know, it's a slow process in the back end is all I can say, it, you know, for the Amazon algorithm. But, you know, w this, this indicator of a, a slope, no changes whatsoever. I didn't do anything. It's just sitting there and it's slowly gathering data and ramping up. Uh, keep going. So, now why did I mention paperback specifically? So, um, and this is gonna, uh, I'm gonna soon talk about the category thing again. So, um, most people don't sell many paperbacks. They don't. Um, and that being, this, that being said, they don't bother. Why, why, why bother? Uh, why bother even offering it because no one sells it or, or no one buys it? Um, well, I've found that my acquisition costs for a reader is a lot smaller when I advertise a paperback. Um, I have categories that are not targetable from an ebook if I'm offering a paperback. I can advertise it to a lot more people if I'm doing a paperback. And the logic would be, well, why advertise to a paperback you know, when I know they're not going to buy it? You want them to click. It doesn't matter. You want them to click so that they get your product page. Because it, it, if they're smart enough to know how to get onto the storefront, they're smart enough to go land here and go, oh, you've got a Kindle edition, which I might be interested in. You know, obviously, the, the case being anyone who lands on your page you know, Amazon's made it pretty clear, pretty easy to go figure out. You offer it in multiple formats. So um, it's kind of irrelevant if you're not selling a lot of paperbacks. Selling paperbacks, I've found, is, is um, you know, making them in your campaign, putting them in your campaign, including them in your campaign, is efficient. Um, increases efficiency. Wait, there's more. You know, and, and, and I've talked, you know, I talked ahead of, of myself, but, you know, again, when, when you're creating these campaigns, remember, um, you know, these campaigns are targeted and, you know, like there's Kindle, there's book, there's book, I, and, uh, and t actually top left, Audible, you know, and, and someone had asked in, in the break about the suggested bid. I, I never pay attention to the suggested bid because as far as I'm concerned, it's useless. You know, I mean, I've, I've had... I've had suggestions for like, you know, bidding of like $5. I'm like, yeah, that's not happening. Um, so, especially if you're new and you're just starting, you, you, you bid what you're comfortable with and see what happens. And let it sit for two weeks and just see what happens. And, and you go up or down from there. Um, 
this is this is really kind of to give an indication of what I see on, on a broad basis, you know, personally, and kind of confirms a lot of what I've been saying. You know, it, it was interesting because I didn't know the data until I measured it a couple of days ago. Yeah, you know, literally just a couple of days ago, um, and I'm like, oh, seems to line up with the funnel. So, uh, you know, aside from the micro print, um, the category, my campaigns average a 76% ACoS. Automatic campaigns averaged about 57%. You know, again, I targeted paperback. You know, there's reasons why. We've talked about it. And my ASIN and keyword campaigns averaged around 38% ACoS. Yeah, you know, it fits really well with that cold, warm, hot concept. Yeah. You know, now, you know, again, you know, I, I've talked about this. You know, a lot of people say that you know, they're not seeing any traction. You know, you, you'd be surprised how often people click on Thriller or some category and they see no traction. This is why you have to look at how many products are being offered for that category. Because there's some thriller categories, which in your mind, you're going thriller is very popular. It should have lots and lots and lots. There's some thriller categories that have like 20 products associated with it. You know, if you happen to choose that and you're ignoring the number of products, you're never going to get even impressions, much less clicks. Um, you, you, you do want, uh, now, emphasis, it should be related to your book. But you do want to pay attention to the number of products you actually have. Um, you know, associated with any category you choose. And, you know, and you can screw this up. Like, you know, if you've got a romance and you're targeting, you know, science, you know, you know a, a, a Victorian romance or a Harlequin type book and you're targeting hard science fiction, yeah, you, you're, you're going to get miserable results. So it still has to be relevant. Yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I've already talked to this. Um, yeah, again, again so, some things have, you know, like, uh, there's some things that have very small numbers, some things have huge numbers. Pick the, you know, like here, a, a, an example on the bottom right that you guys can't read, but techno thrillers. You would think techno thrillers should be killing it for the number of products. In, in this case, anywhere between 200 and 400. You know, where, whereas the other category, now this is, I, I'm looking at it, only after the fact. Notice how, um, uh, all right, actually, it depends on the storefront and time. <laughs> you know, eh, eh, you know eh, in this case, it wasn't showing the uh, association. So uh, I've got techno thriller and techno thriller. One has 200 to 400, one has 3,000 to 5,000. It can't be US, it must have been some other country. Um, so again, be very conscious of that. Um, yeah, I've talked about you know, automatic and category. So uh, I'm going to, yeah. There's a purpose behind exact phrase and broad. Um, I've kind of summarized this and I'll leave it for others because we're, we're probably going to run short on time and I want to have uh, questions. But I've uploaded the, these slides so they're on uh, the schedule app so you can download them. Uh, but I've largely written what I was going to say. Uh, and again, same thing for this. Um, you know, read this on uh, offline because I, I actually I want to show you stuff. Um, so, what do you do once you have campaigns? How do you analyze it? What do you do with it? Um, so, I tend to you know, and, and a lot of this micro data is is in the prior slide. So, uh, just kind of a you know, yeah, you'll have to become familiar with Excel or its equivalent, but. Um, you know, Amazon will provide you with the ability to run reports. And so to make it simple, I, I just gave an example. Um, one of the things you want to do is stop the things that are inefficient. You know, and, and a metric I use, not necessarily the metric you use, or, you know, I mean, you can use my metric, you can use any metric you want. But as an example, I, I, I will oftentimes run a report and go, okay, Anything with more than seven clicks and has had zero orders, um, I don't want to be targeting them anymore. Because basically, I'm, yeah, if, it, if someone clicked on it, I paid something for that click. Um, and I've gotten nothing out of it. 
Now, I'll also add to that, I'll oftentimes look at, you know, did I get page reads? Because, I mean, sometimes you may get a click and not a sale because they're a Kindle Unlimited, so they maybe just downloaded it. You know, so you, you can actually get all that data. And I think I have that in one of the, uh, in probably the next uh, open. Well, I'll add that to my negative list going, you know, I don't want to target them in the future. Because, you know, in the future, you know, theoretically those are wasting my money, so it'll help it become more efficient. Yeah, and, and in this case, I, I, I kind of showed, you know, what the contents of some of the report will say. And, you know, in here, I'm like, all right, there's cost per click. Um, you know, I've spent $16 on one thing that, you know, uh, ended up getting, you know, like, you know, zero sales for. And, uh, you know, why, why do I have that? That's a customer search term I want to kill. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's an example of, you know, some of these are ASINs, some of these are keywords that come back as the search term. You know, that's all kind of gold, gold information. And it's very specific. You, know, you can't take someone's data and use it for yourself. It never works. Uh, yeah, that's why you have to gather the data for your own product because it'll always vary. You know, and kind of in summary on, the, on those, I like to stop the losers. You know, how do I adjust things? You know, yeah, I've got my own metrics. Uh, you don't have to follow them, but they are a way I think of this stuff. Um, you know, if, if, if the bidding, if, if it's really low A costs, yeah, it means I'm, I pro I'm probably leaving something on the table, so maybe I want to up the bid a little and get, get more sales and still be at a comfortable A cost. Um, I do want to point out, not all stores are the same. Uh, so I, I, just, I just wanted to enumerate the, you know, what I see. I mean, I, I sell in a bunch of languages, so, um, like, and, and market on them. So, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, it's like, oh, there's more than just the U.S. store. You know, <laughs> um, so I see, on average, like 40 cents, you know, and, and your mileage may vary. You may experience different numbers. I'm just showing you what I experience. And, you know, in the U.S., I'm seeing 40 cents. It's more competition. Um, UK and Canada and Australia, I'm seeing 25 cents. Germany, I'm seeing 20. France, 20. Spain, 18 cents. So that's based on my information directly. Um, I, I do want to emphasize, you know, marketing stuff may not necessarily be for everybody. You know, especially if you have just a single book, it's going to be very hard to make money because, you know, a lot of money is made from read through either of a series or imagine if you have a whole bunch of singletons like Michael Crichton was infamous for, you know, writing a whole bunch of, you know, one book wonders. Um, and he grew a very large fan base. Uh, so someone would read that and it would probably read another one of his books. Uh, so, but if you only have one book to sell, like it's too early to start the marketing campaign, typically. That's just my advocacy. Take it as it is. Um, some other observations. And we'll be open up to questions. So, um, Things that you don't want to do. <laughs> and, and, and Amazon does say you're not supposed to do this. But like most people, we don't read instructions. Um, so... Uh, yeah, as an example, and I did this for 20 books just to prove the point. Um, you know, I created a 20 books campaign, and I said, all right, let me create a campaign. They were otherwise identical. Um, let me bid 15 cents. Let me bid 18 cents. Let me bid 21 cents. And wouldn't you, you you'd be shocked to realize, you know, and I, I just gathered like two weeks of data. And, you know, the more expensive bid got the most impressions. Shocking. Um, yeah, and it scaled accordingly as you went down. I went ahead and said, okay, now let me change things up. Let me just disable, you know, let, let, me, let, me, let me go ahead and disable the two highest bidding things. Because this would give you an indication that, oh, 21 cents is the right number. Yeah, you know, if you didn't know better. Hopefully after this class, you'll, you'll know better. <laughs> um, that seems to be the right number. Oh, it's, 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 it's the best. 
Um, I disabled the last two and went back to the 15 cents, which was you know, the miserable impression. And it did better than all three of them put together for the same period of time. So again, this is, Amazon has an advocacy against doing uh, the same campaigns with various bids. Here's why. So I do want to make, you know, you, you can bid against yourself and just ho hose your information. Yeah, yeah, you lose efficiency. Is is uh, yeah, when I create category campaigns, I'll usually select several. Yeah, the question was, you know, is that one category or multiple? So, um, yeah, I, when I create a category campaign, I, I, I select all the ones that I, I feel are relevant for that book. Um, bidding cliffs, there are such a thing. And I noticed this um, because I got lazy. And after last season, you know, the, uh, December 2022, 20, I was like, you know, uh, yeah, I, I tend to increase bids a little bit to gather up the holiday sales. It's an advocacy, at least I choose to partake in. And then usually afterwards, I'll, I'll lower the bids. Um, and I lowered them, in this case, 20%, and I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, it was, it was in one of the stores. Um, uh, uh, this is actually in the US. Um, and, and I went back much later, you know, like in September you know, of this year, and I was like, huh. Uh, yeah, or, well, I, I think I fixed it in June, but, yeah, so six months later, I realized, wait a minute, I haven't gotten any impressions. So I, I lowered the bid by 20%, and the machine just sh shut off. It's like, we're done. Yeah, I'm not talking to you anymore. Uh, I, uh, okay. <laughs> so, and I, and I switched it, you know, I rose it, yeah, I, I brought it back up like 10%, impressions kicked back on. So you just have to pay attention. Um, yeah, but there is such a thing as a bidding cliff, or is that what I'm calling it? I don't know that anybody else calls it that, but um, you, know, you, you can have a number that uh, you know, seemingly doesn't get anything, and that's what I actually encountered. Um, Amazon won't spend my money. I, I, I did this test for you guys because I wanted to prove a point. Um, you know, yeah, so everyone says, yeah, I can't get them to spend money. So I, I took an ad and I basically doubled its bid. Yeah, this is a one day total, completely inefficient, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. In one day between two campaigns, because I wanted to try two different, you know, like one's fantasy, one was thriller, just to see do they both work the same way. Yeah, between the two is like six hundred fifty thousand impressions in one day. Um, it was it was a stupid amount of um, you know. You know, was it efficient? No. Um, do I need to go figure out, you know, do, do I care enough to go figure out? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but, but it's something that you can figure out. You, you can study and go, why, why was it doing it? And obviously it upped the cost of my CPC to like suddenly $1.20, um, which I, I don't like that price. So I'm, I'm never willingly bidding that much. Um, Key things, this will be my last slide, uh, and we'll start questions. Uh, sales from campaigns should be a small percentage of your income. And this is ultimately, that's a statement of long term. Um, you, you will be building your fan base, you will be building readership through campaigns because you don't otherwise have a, an easier way to do that. And, and campaigns can generate word of mouth. You know, every sale, could be the right person who talks to the right person who talks to that book club, to talks to other book clubs, and et cetera. That's how things happen. Um, you discover new customers. They help generate read-through, you know, increase the likelihood of word of mouth. Yeah, and it's like a seed. You know, you're, you're trying to grow a tree. And with that, questions? So in that example you gave, the earlier example where you had the three campaigns and you had the one with the higher cost yes. per click and the two others, and you got rid of the two others, and then is it your sense that this is happening because you're essentially bidding against yourself and it's driving it up, or that Amazon just likes the higher cost per click bid? It, 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 it is about bidding against yourself because um, it, it's, it's basically, you know, it knows that this is targeting the same thing. Right. And it's going, okay, well, I'm going to focus on the higher one first and, and right. give it, you know. So it, it has, has to have internally a preference for 
you know, you, you're, this campaign is much more interested in getting sales than the others. So it's going to give the attention to the one that's hi the highest bid. So if I could add to that, so then how do you prevent that from happening when you're running multiple campaigns, for instance, a category, phrase match, broad, broad word match, how do you prevent that overlap from happening if the costs aren't identical for that? Um, so I, I, I tend to try to, you know, so it's a good question. Um, so I actually have, the, the way I set things up is I'll have a category campaign, you know, and, and I, I tend to write like what the cost basis in the campaign name so I, I know what it is without having to look it up. And I go, okay, if I want to emphasize something, I can create another ca category campaign as, you know, that's identical and go, I want to override. I, I want to say instead of 18 cents, I want 20 cents. Okay. And, and most of the impressions will end up going to that 20 cent one instead of the other one. So you have ways of if it's identical, they're gonna they, they, with the same bid, they're gonna share. Um, if one is higher than the other, the other one's gonna get all the love. So okay, so you organize by price versus by yeah. strength of okay. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Yes. Are the different countries in Amazon? Are those books in English or are they translated? Um, actually, so the English-speaking countries like UK, Canada, Australia, they're all in English for the most part. I mean, uh, actually in Canada, I sell French as well. So, you know, uh, we have a major uh, amount of sales there. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously, in, you know, Germany, it's mostly my German books. So, uh, yeah. yeah. For the automatic and the uh, category campaigns, if you have a series and you have ebook, paperback, and hardcover, how many campaigns are you running? One, two, three, six? Very good question. Um, so I, 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 uh, when I have a series, and I, I tend to offer it in all flavors, I will advertise um, you know, the ebook and the paperback on the same campaign. Uh, and, 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 and what I do in addition to that is I'll actually advertise all of the books in that series in the same campaign. For the reason of, you know, every book in a single series theoretically has the same target audience. So you you you, you want to share the benefit of the knowledge that that, category, that that campaign has gotten. So I put all of the books in a series in a single campaign. I offer both ebook and paperback, largely because I want to take advantage of the paperback categories that don't exist for ebook. And the hardcover um, has the same categories as paperback, so it doesn't buy me anything other than offering something that's a higher price point than that might not that might scare somebody away. So I just offer the ebook and paperback. Okay, I want to make sure I understood that. So if you have a series of six books, and they're in ebook and paperback, your automatic campaign is going to have twelve. I've got I've got twelve books in there. Okay, and yeah. the category campaign is going to have twelve products. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Um, for the Amazon ad account management, do you, is that where you manage all the different stores, all the different countries' yes. ads? Okay. Yes. And what do you find is the best translation for like your German books or like translating that to German? Uh, Translator? To, yeah, or like translating the from English to German when you're selling in Germany. Let's talk about this after the okay. session because okay. I, I mean I've got a lot of data on that. Thanks. So. Do you use broad, exact? Um, for, for the keywords broad, exact, and, and, uh, and uh, phrase, I think, uh, um, I, I use all three. Um, but again, I, I only use the keywords that have been created out of the data that I've gathered in the prior, you know, in, in the category and automatic campaigns. I, I glean that information. And, and I use all three. Yeah, is that the most efficient? Should I be focusing on one? I have advocacies in the slide deck. But I've, I just do all three, yeah. All right, so th 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 we're, we're out of time, so you know, uh, thanks everybody for attending.